a huge move to the herd and welcome to episode 14 of our Omnifactory playthrough. So between episodes I was tidying up the base a little, trying to get things organised, <coughs> excuse me, and I realised that when I went to go and add some more sugar cane to my smelter, I was completely out of sugar. So basically it's time to start thinking about power situation because obviously the one pneumismatic dynamo and the four steam turbines is just going to burn through fuel considerably. So it's time to wait, move away from sugar onto more uh, sustainable um, power supply for our MV and possibly late uh, early HV tier. So we're going to need to use more pneum pneumismatic dynamos. So to that end we're going to need to automate diamond production and automating diamonds means automating deep model learning so that's our goal for today so the first thing you may notice no ladder i put an elevator in and the second thing you may notice is i've opened up the base a little bit so i've cleared out a load of space because we're going to need a lot of space for deep model learning uh the automation and this is not where we're going to do the first part of the automation. The first part we're going to do is actually down here in this part of the base. Now, looking back at previous videos, I realized that watching people craft stuff isn't necessarily the most interesting thing in the world. So what I'm going to try going forwards is I'm going to craft all the components, etc., between episodes and then I will assemble the automation or the process in the episode and hopefully that will be slightly more interesting. Um, if you would like to see it based on this, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. If you prefer just watching people craft stuff again, just let me know. So on the uh, Omni Factory Discord, there is a Omni Compendium which is a whole host of tips and tricks uh, for uh, doing various things in Omnifactory. And one of those is a very handy uh, chart and detailed description on automating deep modern learning. And the bits we need to automate are the polymer clay, because that's obviously the fuel for everything else. Um, so the other bit I'm gonna automate is getting diamonds which the polymer clay will feed into, which we can then feed into our pneumismatic dynamos, which could then hold power our system. So I have built a few machines. You can see there is a whole host of them. Um, we've got uh, electric furnaces, macerators, alloy smelters, chemical reactors, electrolyzers, we've got CEFs because we need those. We've got cobblestone generators. We've got some loop fabricators and simulation chambers. We've got an impulse hopper because this actually helps me get around a potential problem uh, which i'll explain where we put the stuff down we've got our numismatic dynamos and associated upgrades uh, we've got a vibrant capacitor bank i went through the whole uh, capacitor bank quest chain um, to make up some vibrant capacitor banks so that we've got a buffer for our power and we've got pressurized fluid conduits nighting conduits and energy conduits and so forth so the, the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my CEFs and roughly about the middle of the base I'm going to drop my first uh, CEF in right, so I also need some energy conduit this is one of those times I realise I put things too deep or have I? Uh, one. no I haven't Right. so the first CEF is going to go roughly here and I think that's the dot is it? Let's just get my wrench and see if I can rotate it. Yep, that's the dot I was looking for. And what I'm then going to do is just pop a single piece of 16x energetic alloy cable. Because this is something uh, new I'm going to try, which is instead of building out horizontally, I'm going to try building towers, so vertically. Right, so I also want to do, so if that's one machine out, two, gap, one, two. So we want to put another one around about here. Oops. Again, 
get my wrench and put the output there. And then we'll probably need to go a few over here. So one out, gap, two, so one, gap, so about here. Let's just have my adjusting ally and we'll put this here. And we'll just rotate that. And we'll pop our central pillars on top of each of the CFs. Right, so how is this going to work? Well, two components we're going to need. We're going to need to make clay. We already know how to make clay. We've got a production line up there. So it's basically a cobblestone gen into a macerator to turn that into gravel. Gravel to turn another macerator to turn gravel into sand. Another macerator to turn the sand into dust. And then finally, a chemical reactor with water to turn the dust into clay. Uh, one thing I will need to do, I've just realized, is take a water line and I probably don't have enough pressurized fluid conduit, so I will go and make some of that in a second. Oops. Because we'll take water from our existing end of war. Let's stop breaking everything and try putting things in properly. Connect that one in, that one. Yeah, perfect. I had to put a false floor in because uh, it was a bit precarious. As you can see, it's a bit of a drop. Right, so I'm gonna need some more pressurized fluid conduit. Let me go and quickly make those, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I have made a stack of the pressurized fluid conduit. I also made a stack of item conduits, because they're obviously gonna be quite beneficial. Um, so we'll go back to where we are. Right, so first things first, we'll get our um, first setup done. Now, the first thing a machine I want to place to try and keep things lined up is our chemical reactor. You'll notice everything is MV tier. Um, this is predominantly because we need an MV, I think it's an MV chemical reactor to make the um, clathrates and just trying to keep everything the same. So we'll just pop that in there. And we'll pop our advanced chemical reactor there. Actually, do I want to pop it one forward and up? The reason I'm thinking about this is the design I'm doing allows me to grow up the way. And if I keep the conduits out to the sides, that means that I can put additional ones in as and when I need to. Um, so if I just pop that there, and that's going to be insert. And the last thing I need to do is connect up that. So we've got water. And there's a link missing somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, that looks connected there. All looks connected. Mm -hmm. Where is it broken? Where does it stop going blue? Let's all stop going blue. That's peculiar. We're still connected up here. I 
think inadvertently I've disconnected something. The blue there. Blue there. Blue all the way down here. So it must be in here. It's out there. It is. I can see. Yeah, that could potentially be the problem. Be the problem. So if I just do, or do we want to do this? And now we're connected. I'll fill in the floor later on. Right, so we've got water going into our advanced chemical reactor. It's filling up nicely. So the next thing I will need to put down is one of. Um, is it three macerators I'll need? Yeah. So first macerator goes here, and the second macerator here, and the final macerator here. And then I want to grab my cobblestone generator, and that can go just here. We start with item conduits. So we want to connect an item conduit. Oh, that's a fluid conduit. Let's grab the item conduits instead of the fluid conduits. And the first one. And we'll disconnect that one. We want to extract where it's active. Insert. And that should start putting cobblestone into the macerator. Next one is to connect these two. Extract always active, insert. Let's just start making my sand. And finally, extract always active, insert. This should make out dust. And the last but not least, extract always active, insert. I had this problem before and it took me a while to figure out. I need to enable output from the uh, input from the output side to get it to work, or I just make sure that the outputs are st stacked up against that cable in future. Right, so I am now making clay. Well, it would be if I had the power, which I should have. Why has everything stopped? Yeah, out of energy. We're all connected in. I wonder if my numismatic dynamo upstairs has run out of juice. Yes, it has. Let me grab some diamonds. Another reason to make sure that I uh, get this whole system automated. There we go. That should get everything powered up. And one thing I can do to uh, mitigate the impact of brownouts is to put batteries in each of the CEFs, which I may do later, but for the time being, we'll uh, leave it as it is. So we're making plenty of clay on that one. On this one, we need to make some nether quartz. So I need uh, an electric furnace, two macerators. Is it an electrolyzer or a chemical reactor? I think it's an electrolyzer. Let's just check. Uh, nether quartz. Yep, the electrolyzer. Four glass in the electrolyzer equals nether quartz. And I want my nether quartz to be coming out this way. So let's do electrolyzer here. If I face it, then I won't have the problem I had before. So that's going that way. And if we're going Around. So the first thing I will need is my macerator. Followed by another macerator. So that's gravel, sand, and then finally electric furnace here to turn that into glass. And just in here, we'll pop our second cobblestone generator. And 
and get these all connected up. So, add some conduit. Get rid of that link. Extract always active and insert. That gives me my gravel. Again, this one. Extract always active. Insert. This gives me my sand. And finally, this one. Extract always active and insert. Gives me glass. And the last thing we need is to pop that in there. Extract always active and insert. And this starts giving me nether quartz. Okay, so that's our two key components. We've got chemical reactor producing the clay, and we've got nether quartz. Now the nether quartz needs to go into a chemical reactor, if I remember correctly, with, yes, it is. So, chemical reactor, and this one goes here. Then, oh, I forgot to make something. Right, I need to make one more machine. I will be right back. Okay, so the one machine I was missing from all of that was the fluid extractor, which is going to be very useful because we'll need that to get the fluid from the ender pearls. Right, so advanced chemical reactor. We then take some conduit and I want that extract always active insert right so that takes my enderpearls fluid with the chemical reactor to produce clathrates followed by our electric furnace which turns those clathrates and turns them into pulsating dust. So extract the waste active. Insert. Now hopefully I've done this right. About to find out. So the last machine we need is my alloy smelter. And the alloy smelter will turn our clay from here and our pulsating dust into um, the polymer clay. The thing is, as it stands at the moment, this is going to produce way much more clay than I'm going to be producing pulsating dust, unless I get the, the levels all balanced. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an impulse hopper here and I'm gonna pop this just here. Now this impulse hopper allows me to say, right, only allow things to go through when there's the uh, same number that you require. So if I take, if I go get some clay and some pulsating dust. I'm also gonna grab one of these capacitors that I found bother to make another one at the moment. Right, some pulsating dust and some clay. And I say in here, pulsating dust one, clay one. So if I just drop some clay in here, it's holding that clay until it's received the other items. So if I then say, take that, it will then output them. And what we want to do is we want to output that to push. And then once I drop my capacitor in, this will increase the energy storage. And that's dropped that in there and that's made my first pulsating polymer plate. Relatively simple setup but it should do the job. So I want to connect my item conduit. Not there. Thank you. I want to connect it here. I want to say insert. And from this one, I want to extract. It's active. 
So that'll start filling that up with clay and that will be, that will just hold that there until it's got some pulsating dust. So the last step in this is to get our deep mob learning setup done. So I've got two loop fabricators, two simulation chambers. And we want our loop fabricators roughly, if I pop them, well, let's see, if I have my, it's my energetic, not my vibrant ally. We have, this is my center line. Loop fabricator, I don't throw them away, get back here to say here and here, and my simulation chambers there and there. And then I need some item conduits in between there and there. I'm going to extract always active, extract always active. Here, insert, insert. Right, so once I've got those powered up, which I will do in a second, just clear out a run for all of this. So they should start receiving power. Uh, what do we want? All right, this is going to want to accept my um, ender pearls. So if this one is my ender pearls, so if I drop an item conduit in here, connect that in, same for that. Oops, wrong one again. Right, so I want to extract on, let's make this channel black. Right, so that will extract any ender pearls that come through there. If I then do that, that, on black. Oops, just missed it. We don't want to extract. So that will take any of our ender pearls once we've got our simulation in there and drop them out there. Um, so yeah, that's all good. The last bits we want is to drop up here. And these we want to insert. We'll insert these on blue. We want to go from our advanced alloy smelter we'll cut down under here we'll take item conduit item conduit and is that the one and we will go take that one off take that one off you're gonna extract on blue always active 
So in theory, if I look at this now, I find that I've got some polymer clay in there. So only thing left to do is to pop upstairs, grab our Enderman data model. Make sure we've got, yeah, we've got plenty of power in there. Grab some ender pearls just to get things kicked off. Just a couple of stacks of those should do. Drop our enderman in here. That's superior. And meanwhile, in our fluid extractor. Again, have I not connected something? Why did we disconnect? My CEF does not have any power, despite the fact it's connected to that. That one's fully powered. better somehow managed to switch that to not insert power okay so what should be happening now I check this is eventually not an ender oh of course it does help if I connect these two up otherwise it's never gonna work so many moving pieces. Right. Again, I want to do this here. So let's just do that for now. Extract always active. Insert. And that should then heat that up, which it has. We should see in one of these. Again, I've forgotten to connect that to that. Right. So let's just connect that one. We want to insert on that. Extract always active. Oops. And that's starting to make our clay. Okay, so the first stage of our deep mob learning um, automation has been done. We now have, theoretically, endless supply of clay, endless supply of nether quartz. Once we've got our enderman deep mo um, model up to superior, we should get a nice steady supply of ender pearls, which should then. Um, Right, and there's our first ender pearl. Now that's set up. And why is that not extracting? Always active. Right, so we should start now getting that to a self-sustaining point. So they will feed into here, be extracted. And that's brilliant. So in the next episode, we'll expand this out. We'll get some numismatic dynamos in place. We'll get our Shulker model in um, and have a little power plant and capacitance bank set up there. I'll tidy things up a little here. Um, but the great thing about this setup is because these are 16x cables, we can go up to a height of four of these machines so we can increase the load. And that means I can also expand the simulation chambers out to the side if necessary. So I hope this uh, episode was enjoyable for you. Um, again, if you've Think the format of me just setting up the machines rather than crafting everything is better please let me know in the content comments uh, if you like this video give it a like if you want to see more of them please feel to subscribe and until then i wish you a very pleasant day goodbye